Welcome back from the break. Thank you for still being tuned in to Books and Blogs. We have another guest now, again one of our very own local authors. She's not just an author, but she is a pastor of JCCC. Cup. Pastor John, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. And nice I know here. Pastor Sam is here in the spirit yes. somewhere. Yes, <laughs> he is. Congratulations on the Lazarus era. Thank this you. This is a very unique title. Thank so you. when I first saw it, I'm like the Lazarus era. Lazarus, Lazarus in the Bible. Yes. Okay, so usually I don't do this. I start from the beginning to the end. Yes. But now I want to start from the end coming to the beginning. Yes. Tell us the story of Lazarus from, for those who may not be acquainted okay. with it. You find the story of this particular Lazarus, because there are other Lazarus in the yes. Bible. Yes, there are like two, I think. Yes. yes. You know, there's the famous one who Jesus raised from the, the dead. Who died That's in... not the one you're talking about. Uh -huh. This Lazarus is in Luke 16, from verse 19 to 22. Very short passage in the scripture but very, very loaded. And he was a poor person. It was a parable that Jesus gave. And he contrasted this Lazarus with a rich man, sometimes called Dives. And the story of Lazarus is that he was laid at the gate of the rich man. Mm -hmm. The rich man was like really wealthy, opulent. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he was doing well. This yeah. guy was, had done well for himself. Lazarus was on the other end of the spectrum, struggling, suffering. And he was laid at the gate of the rich man mm. to actually beg for whatever crumbs the rich man would deem yes. fit to throw his way. At the end of the story, they both die, showing it doesn't matter where you are in life. Up, down, death is a common denominator. Yes. And Lazarus goes to heaven and the poor man goes to hell. So that's the basic mm -hmm. uh, parable. So we unpack this parable throughout the book yeah and you call it the lazarus era so yes. already i like that you painted the picture that he was a poor man so poor man he lacks he doesn't have anything he has to rely on others to for his sustenance yes but then as an author you paint that there was an error in his life yes. that led to his circumstance yes and that's what this book is about that's what the book is about that that's what now mm. upturned me completely yes. I'm like the man is already poor what, what, what else are you looking for from, La from Lazarus, yes, you know? Yes. So let's start with uh, a couple of things stood out to me. Um, yes, you say here that there's a verse in chapter 1. It's the most quoted but least understood, and that's 3 John 2. Why do you think it's the least understood uh, Bible verse? Okay. So many people know this scripture. I mean, let me talk about believers. Beloved, I pray above all things. That's a loaded scripture. I mean, you could have prayed for anything that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Why do I say it's mm -hmm. most quoted, least, least understood, understood yeah. and hardly experienced? Why? God provides for his children. He's a good father. Yeah. No good father wants his children to do without. Yeah. There's no way we can say that God is not a good father. However, he says, your prosperity that you walk in externally is dependent on the prosperity of your soul. So if you're really serious about being prosperous, don't put the horse before the cart. Don't put the cart before the horse. Yeah. What do I mean? I want you to prosper as your soul prospers. What is our soul? Our mind, our will, our emotion. We can only prosper that through the word of God. So it's locked in the word of God. Mm. Our prosperity is locked in the word of God. I even go as far as telling people, if you hate the word of God, you hate prosperity. So it's not on God for you and I to prosper. It's on us. But many people leave even what they should do to God. That's what I'm saying. They quote it. Beloved, I wish above all else you may prosper. And they misconstrue that to mean sit back, I will just bring the wealth and dump it on your lap. But God says, as your soul prosper, or I'll give you a scholarship to an Australian university or academy if you get this grade. So the scholarship is open. As many can get it, but it's dependent on what? Good grade. Good grade. So a student will not go again looking for a scholarship. It's guaranteed. What will they do? They'll hit the book. 
Likewise, God is saying, prosperity is guaranteed. Look at the Garden of Eden. When I decided to create man, what kind of environment did I put him in? I mean, this was the epitome of creation. Mm. This man reflects and represents me. Yes. He is the masterpiece of creation. Where did I place him? That will give you an idea how I think about mankind. Yes. Everything was tip top. Everything was beautiful. In fact, except yes. abundance, yes. relative provision. Yeah. But there was a requirement fellowship with God. When did things start going wrong? One evening, God is looking for Adam. Well, this is not how we hang out. Yeah. We usually meet, we usually talk. Yeah. But something has interfered. Adam is now hiding. So that's why I say, 3 John 2, quoted all over Christendom, Africa, everywhere, but misunderstood because many people don't understand that other part. Yeah. It's dependent on how prosperous my soul is. So if I use percentage, mm -hmm. your physical prosperity can never go beyond your soul prosperity. If your soul is prospered up to 20%, don't expect 70% physical prosperity. Wow. That's why I was quoting it yeah. as the most yeah. misunderstood scripture. And I like you've used the analogy of scholarship. It's the simplest analogy ever yeah. to use. You yeah. can promise a scholarship. All you need is to get a couple of A's and it's yours. Yeah. So the A's won't fall from a tree. Yeah. You have to work hard, you have to study. And the A's in this case are the principles in God's word. Mm. We're not even being told to research and do, you know, no, no. rocket science. Mm -mm. He's saying all the secrets are hidden them in, in the word. my word. Yeah. And my word is everywhere. If you get in that word and then take it at face value, this is not a newspaper you're reading where people can claim fake news. <laughs> This is not a, a novel. Yeah. This is my mind. Yeah. These are my thoughts. This is what I think about. I'm the you. same yesterday. The same same God who put together the Garden of Eden. I'm the same yesterday, today, forevermore. I haven't changed. So if I thought then that man should have this optimal Eden to live in, I still think the same way. Mm. Situations have changed, economies have changed, but I haven't changed. Yeah. Yeah. My word is constant get in there i don't want anything else i just want you to discover nuggets from my word look at jesus when he goes through the temptation he doesn't quote his thinking mm -mm. his experiences no. he says it is written that's how he sails through. it is written i won't give you my personal opinion no. can't you know what's happening so many people are going out of their way to give their personal opinion on this thing i'm saying Let's go to the original manufacturer who made us. Let's get his mind. I mean, look at cars. You have an expensive car because we are the expensive ones in creation. Yes. We beat all the gold, the silver, yes. the, you know, this natural wonder. Yes. This expensive car breaks down. You will not take it to any run of the mill mechanic. No. You will go to the shop and say, this state of the art vehicle is giving me some sort of problem. You guys who made it, figure it out. Yeah. It deserves that kind of care. Yeah. Now our manufacturer is God. And on the ground, yeah. we, his top mm. dollar creation, things are not quite as they should. Where should we go? Mm. Let's not consult Catherine's opinion. Let's not consult Pastor John's opinion. Let's go to the manufacturer. What's your take? Yes. Should we live in squalor? Should we live in poverty? Or should we live in prosperity? So he says, my word will tell you everything. Mm. Then we start speaking that word. And James tells us, it's not enough to read the word. It's not enough to quote the word. We now have to go an extra step and do the word. Yeah. Mm. yeah. My God, you have <laughs> broken it all down. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. And you say here, Again, and I think it ties to that scripture. I like that any, any point you give in the book has a biblical tie to it. You say here that um, we get the abundant life by investing in others and pursuing God rather than ourselves. So now here you're talking about it's not just prosperity for you, but you have to pour into other people. Let's speak on that. This book is not talking about 
prosperity for the sake of prosperity. Let me explain it. We're not talking about prosperity for the sake of flossing. Ah. We're not talking about prosperity for the sake of showing up one another. That's not where we are at. That won't help anybody. If you ask me, you can only drive one car at a time. And, so and only live in one house at a time. Thank you. So, how do you invest in other people if you have nothing to invest? Okay? And if you look at the book, we say prosperity goes beyond the tangible. Mm. It goes beyond the cash, it goes yes. beyond the houses. No material. To wealth that is peace, yes. joy, and all. So the point of this book is stop looking outward. Stop looking at anything external, including that money. Look inward and first discover the treasures that are locked in you as you are right now. Yeah. With or without connection, with or without a name, yes. with or without money, yes. regardless of where you are, you are locked with so many resources. Look inward, tap into this, then find a way to pour that. Because when people look at this, they might misunderstand mm. and think they're only talking about finances. Yeah. No. No. You might not have finances, but you have an idea. And that's what we need. And you find someone struggling and say, why don't you do that? You've invested. You might not have finances, but someone is believed. But because you know you carry well, you walk up to them and tell them, hey, I know you're hard for me. But guess what? It's going to be okay. Mm. It starts with you understanding. I don't just need resources. I am a resource. Uh, I don't just need what can come from outside. Myself, as I am right now, I am a resource. Yeah. And then taking pride in that. And then you can no longer sit back. Look at so many stories that have impacted even the media. Let's go with this wonderful Shosho, Shosho Watang. We all know about her. She looked at herself, regardless of her gender, her age, her background, she was like, I can't just sit here. I have something that I can contribute. All these young people like going in wonderful yeah. nice matatus. Yeah. I may not be in those matatus, I may not necessarily enjoy the loud music, but I will say to this that they have different in there. She stepped out to give. Where is she today? Her story has totally changed. Yes. Yeah. Because when you become a resource to the world around you, people start gravitating towards you right. to be a resource to you. Oh, yeah. That is profound. Yeah. So it's, it's, you are the resource. You have to recognize you are the worth. You are yes. the value. Yes. 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 Before even the Before material things. Else. So what has happened then where our perception has become so outward in that it, it has to be about the things we have, the people we are seen with, uh, the jobs we have, the businesses we carry, the homes we own. What has contorted, and I think that's what you allude to in chapter 5, your chapter there talks about evil prosperity. We have a total um, misconception of contortment yeah. of what we think prosperity should be. Okay. And we see it everywhere. Many people, when they look at those that they think are making, they look at the external factors. They don't even stop to ask, why is that person making it? Okay? And if you get that wrong, when you make it, you handle it wrong. Ah. Because to you, that person who made it was always this out of your class person. Now I'm in the class. So why do I need to associate with those who are not in the class? But having interacted with many people who are wealthy, can I tell you, most of them are humble. Most of them are very affable, amiable, approachable. Approachable, accessible. Great people who love to help people. But because in the first place someone misunderstood and they thought it's all about acquiring, amassing, acquiring, amassing, when they acquire and amass without understanding the underlying factors, they now put a wall. But look, let's even come out from the church. Let's go to the world. Yeah. They talk about philanthropy, yeah. which is just a way of giving. Why do they keep giving and always looking for a new charity to support? They have discovered the joy of giving. It's not just about having. I have something. And isn't it so beautiful when I connect 
what I have is someone who needs it the most. Yes. So I'm here to say, let's correct the notion. Huh. By all means, God wants us prosperous, He wants us blessed, but not just for the sake. He wants us prosperous and blessed so that now we open our eyes and say, who needs what I have? Which village can I change? Now I have resources not to build a high gate with CCTV and electric fence yes. and lock myself away. But now I can go to a village that doesn't have water. And it doesn't pinch my pocket at all to sink a bottle mm. and walk away knowing I have invested. Yes. The joy that comes from that is what makes us most godlike. Mm, I see that. Because God doesn't see what will I gain from Angeshi. He just wants to bless us. Yes, yes. He wants to lift us. He wants to adorn her with his beauty. Yes. If you look at Ezekiel, God speaking to his people, he tells them what's happening. When I found you, you were kicking in your own blood, forsaken, forgotten. I picked you, I washed you, I swaddled you, I clothed you, and I bejeweled you. God always finds us. It doesn't matter if we are his followers or not. When he finds us, we are neither here nor there. We are lost. Yeah. We are literally drowning in our own blood. He rescues us. He dresses us. What right do I now have to behave like I did it for myself? The only thing I can do is the way God picked me, who can I pick? Yeah. Who can I identify? Yes. Which children's home can I support? Which widow? Can I make sure when it's cold they have, mm. you know, like the dockers yes. or the habita ministry yes. can dress? That's what it's all about. It's not about I got it all no. and now when I come somewhere you're all shaking yes. your boots. Yes. It's about now that I have it, glory to God, what can I do? And I think if you allow me, that is why most of the people who've made it, they have a story. They're coming from somewhere. They did always have it. Why? So that they can appreciate it when they have it. It's true. And they're able to identify another person and say, you know what, I can't be fighting. Just yesterday, mm. I was where you are. Mm. So I want I to know. give you... Yeah. And then because they've been through a few things, they can identify the real and the fake. They're like, if I help this guy, he's the real deal. Yes. He will, he will rise. Yes. So I'm very passionate about yeah. it. Yeah. To understand that it's not about all this outward trapping. Mm -mm. And they are good. And we love them. Why should I live in a place that God did not design me for? But don't just end the story there. No. How many others can you help live the way Lift you live? Lift up others, pay it forward. Exactly. And you know what you've said alludes to um, what you see happening, especially in the West, even here. It's just that here maybe it's not as reported. Yeah. They find millionaires killing themselves, hanging themselves, uh, drug overdose. And we, we are left here wondering, but dude, you had so much going for you. Why would you want to kill yourself? Precisely. And, and is it this emptiness of where everything else prospered apart from your soul? It wasn't right inside. Exactly. Exactly. Look at the rich man in our story. Yes. Yes. Everything was good. I mean, the way he ate, the way he drank, well, that's fine. But sadly, like you're saying, it's not all. So both Lazarus and the rich man, they both missed on God in one way or the other. Lazarus went to heaven, thank God. And it's credit to him. Why? Most people would just throw in the towel and forget about God. But Lazarus, in spite of his issues, he held on, he held on to his faith. And we cannot retract no. that credit from yeah. him. But like you say, did the rich man have everything? No. He had physical prosperity, but he did not have spiritual prosperity, which is evil prosperity. If yes. you look at Psalm 73, look at a chapter in the book of Job, he's talking about having prosperity that has no regard for God. Mm. That is actually what evil prosperity is. Prosperity that does not regard God as its cause and does not consult God in its needs. That is why we have so many wealthy people. When mm. the lights are off and the gates are closed and the cameras are gone, such an emptiness. Overwhelmed. Yes. Because money can't talk to you. No. Money no. can't keep you on. You won't stitch a sweater of clothes. <laughs> Please, there are duvet of coins and now say you are happy. You understand? <laughs> that overwhelming, overpowering emptiness yes. now hit them and they say, I don't even have a friend I can laugh with or oh, share a meal pasta. with. Yeah. Just pasta. Yeah. yeah macaroni and cheese. <laughs> I don't have. 
I am so empty. Yeah. People want me for what I have. Nobody wants me. Yeah, me. Me. Yeah. I'm covered by all these titles. Yeah. And that loneliness, loneliness. It kills. It kills. Yeah. But if you knew the purpose of that well, you wouldn't be lonely. Mm. Because there'd be so many people in your stuff. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 9. It says the power of giving is that it causes prayers of thanksgiving mm. to abound to God. When you give, I like to tell people it's like, okay, we all have to pray. But when you're a avid giver, yeah. passionate giver, giving as God calls us to do, there's so many people praying for you, talking to God about you. It abounds with so much thanksgiving. God will bless your giving and increase your righteousness on the earth. But there are so many people who say, bless Wangeshi. Yes. I thank God Wangeshi lived. Look at Doka. She dared to die. And the people are like, mm -mm. I don't think so. This side, no. Mm -mm. Peter come from your busy schedule. Stop what you're doing. There's a woman here who should not die. Yes. I don't think she had loneliness in her life. No. Those widows, when she's passing, hey Doka, how you doing? The sweater you sent has really mm. kept you warm. Even if you don't have them, the warmth of knowing that they appreciate what you're giving them yes. keeps you going. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's where people are missing it. Mm. At the end of the day, money won't warm your heart. No. It'll buy you warm clothes. But, but it won't warm, warm you inside. Heart, yeah. Which is what matters. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. As we wind up, Joanne, you said prosperity is a function of a heart on fire. I love, love, love yes. that quote. Yes. Tell us about that. Break that down for us. Let's talk about purpose. Yes. You know, because I really want to get this message across. Money is the least of your worries. Oh, say that again. Money is the least of anybody's worries. And I can support that not only from scripture, but from the many contemporary stories we have. There's a movie that you can watch, okay. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. Uh -huh. A story out of Malawi, okay. and they were having drought in 2001. These people didn't have anything, but this boy had an idea. And out of his idea, he saved his entire village from certain famine and death. A little boy, a little boy in black Africa, hello. And his story goes out, it's now a movie that is inspiring. You can get it on Netflix or any of those okay. other platforms. Prosperity is a function of a heart on fire. Mm. When everybody else was looking at the dark, and the family. This boy was like, these are solutions. There's something we can do without waiting for donors. Ask who are here, ask who are troubled. His heart was so on fire. He didn't have time to complain. He didn't have time to lament. He was just turning it around in his head. If it doesn't work this way, can it work this way? That fire saved his entire village. They were able to grow crops. Yes. They were able to sell crops. Yes. And guess what? Finally, he gets to go to school to be an engineer, which was his dream. Mm. Was he prospered at the end of the day? But doubt. where did it come from? A fire. Mm. A fire. Look at that show, show. A fire. Look at that wonderful Matatu Tao who decided mm. I'm going to have my three piece, you know, suit and I'm going to add a flavor yeah. to the job that I'm yeah. doing. He has fire. He's not just going to a job. You look down on my job. That's your story. But for me, I, know I have fire yeah. about it. My matatu will be clean. My ethics will be on point. The way I receive my clients, I will give you change to the last point. That fire, today I want to believe, if he wants to own a fleet of matatus, he can. Yeah. Why? Mm. Money or provision follows vision. Love it. Vision is what powers you up, even in the night. You can't sleep. Not because you have insomnia. It's just this thing, knowing at the back of your mind, it keeps your heart pumping. I may not have the resources, but I'm a resource. Mm. And I have to get out what I have. I have to write that book. I have to shoot that movie. Even if I use Kasim. Yes. I, I don't have those exotic <laughs> yes. cameras. But yeah. I have a phone. Yeah. And I have a friend who has agreed to, to hold it. <laughs> Tomorrow, John Bafta. Yeah. Tomorrow, to give this guy has got a note. What am I saying? Anybody who is on fire, sooner rather than, it may not happen overnight, it rarely does. But keep the fire. Keep fanning it. Keep blowing on it. Prosperity is just 
and knock away. It will the never Bible go. itself says, a little slumber, a little folding mm. of the hands, and poverty will knock you like an armed man. That means a little unfolding of the hands. <laughs> a little less sleep. Yes. And prosperity. Wow. Yeah. Where can people find the Lazarus era? We have them at most Jubilee Christian Church bookshops. Okay. At Parklands, we have it at Thika, we have it. We also have it at Chania Bookshop. Chania at Bookshop. At Kencom. Okay. And we have it at the Tumaini Bookshop mm -hmm. at Feather and at Utawala. Okay. So if people go to any of those or even order directly, mm -hmm. we also make deliveries. Maybe you'll give the number later. Yeah. But we also make deliveries. Delivery. All you have to do, we have a simple Safaricom line. We call it. I'm here, I need the book. We even sent one as far as to Kana the nice. other day. Somebody called us. So yeah. If you're within, yes. we'll find a way to get yes. the book. You just need to give us a call. Nice. Do you yeah. have the number? Yes. Okay, say it. 07 07 747 006. Okay, it's the hotline. 0707 747 006. Perfect. Yeah. So Chania bookshops, Tumaini bookshops, yes. JCC bookshops. Yes. And the number for free delivery. Yes. Yes. Pastor Jay, thank you so much for coming. This was phenomenal. Amen. My takeout from this conversation is I am a resource. Yeah. 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 So even before you look at anything else, the resource first is with you. That's right. And then now from there you can start whether it's comfort, whether it's yes. peace, whether it's joy, whether it's a kind word, mm. you're the resource. You're the resource. I love it. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. coming on the show today. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. I'm so delighted. Most welcome. Yeah. Well, that marks the end of Books and Blogs this beautiful Monday morning. Now you know how to activate your potential and you also know that you are the resource you need to monetize that potential. What a Monday. Powerful, powerful book from our local authors here in Nairobi, Kenya. Have yourselves a wonderful day.